So in my last video, I mentioned I was going on a bike race and I was gonna be gone for basically a week and a half plus more time at home on the editing machine, but that fell through. And that may seem like a bummer because it's no income for that, but I get to focus on the channel and focus on making videos for you guys, so I'm super pumped. Today, I'm on a river up near my home. I'm fishing up a section I started on a long time ago and I haven't been back since, so I'm super excited. And I'm in the afternoon time, which I don't normally do, so I'm hoping later in the evening, maybe I can get in some dry action or dry dropper action. So let's hit it. All right, I'm starting off the day with a bird's nest on the point, and then I've got an orange pertagon up on the dropper. This current's fairly slow. So I don't have a whole lot of weight on. Got plenty of time for my flies to, to sink. So I replaced that broken off bird's nest with a heavier one. Just want a little more contact with the bottom, with my bottom fly. That one deeper back there. Well, if there was a fish there, you gotta go look at it. Before we move on, let's get a water temp. We're moving into summertime here, and this is something I want to bring to everyone's attention more. The water's coming in at 54.3 degrees, which I'm not surprised. It's perfect here because it's flowing right out of a lake. I'm probably a half a mile below a dam. But uh, as we move into summer, I want you guys to start thinking about carrying a thermometer so you can keep your temperatures in a safe range for the fish. Because if the water gets up above 67, 68 degrees, the mortality rate, meaning the chances of a fish dying after you release it, even a good clean release, uh, it, chances of dying go up quite a bit. So uh, you don't want to fish above 67. So if you're starting somewhere in the morning and the water is at 60, you know, two, then maybe mid afternoon, you should check it again and see how the temps do. Cause they can rise a lot in the afternoon, especially if it's a free zoner. So uh, keep an eye on your temps. This looks like a really nice place to find a fish. Pretty deep riffle. And this water is crystal clear. So it's very hard to stalk the fish without making a ruckus. So I'm just gonna start here on the slow edges and work my way across to the slow edge on the other side. Try to stalk quietly. Trying to stay on this side of the river all the way up through the run and then I'm gonna go back and get the other side. This water's really hard to wade in without spooking the fish, so. Just gonna work this side first and then go back and do the other side. Mm, this is such a good run right here. It's like a shelf here coming off this gravel bar right over into this structure. 
and then some slack water on the side over there. Coming back to get the far side. I'm gonna swap out my uh, my orange pertagon for a blowtorch. Drops off into a really deep hole. There's certainly a chance I can get a fish here, but I was pretty close to it crossing the stream. So I may have spooked it all. We shall see. Ooh, that was a fish. Okay, didn't spoof him. There he is. Oh yeah. Sweet! Of course he's got me in a bad spot here. fish this is. Wow! Holy crap! This is a football! Holy smokes, what a first fish. 16 incher. There's got to be another one in here. 100%. Now one I got on the bird's nest, in case anybody's wondering. There's one. Ooh. Dang it. Couldn't get him hooked up all the way. See if I can get him on a second pass here. Definitely stuck him, so it's possible he won't come out and play again. Ah, uh, there it was again. Just thumped it though. Hmm. 
definitely some holding water. Let's see if I can find one in here. It's deep up against this rocky cliff. It's going to be a little tricky getting my flies in there. We'll see. There's one. Oh, these fish fight so well. Nailed it. Got this one on the boat tour or the Another little football. This one's about 13 inches. Stunning little fish. Awesome. Did I mention this holster I got? From Opros? It's awesome. There's gotta be more fish in this hole, in this run here. And get that one deep. There's one. Yep. Whoa, don't fall down, Eric. Sweets. Blow. It's kind of I keep saying blowtorch, but it's actually the uh, bird's nest. It's actually the bird's nest. I keep saying the blowtorch, but hmm. this is a uh, better fish. Maybe? No, nope, not really. <laughs> These things fight hard. Even though they're not huge. Oh, this is awesome. It's a little 10 inch here, but still, these things are so clean. Bird's nest for the win. Dang, that fish is so clean. Wow, three fish and three, oh, three casts. Oh, this one's playing me a little better. <laughs> Bird's nest on the menu. This one's a little better. About 13 inches. Okay, that was three casts, three fish. Mm, that was a fish. Oh, that was quick. Holy crap. Cool. In case you're wondering, bird's nest for the wind here. Oh man, these fish are so pretty. Good, they came off. Sweet.
Boom. This is a young one, still has her par marks. Sweet. <laughs> that was a fish. And they are liking this bird's nest. Oh, I knew there was a fish there. Oh, dang. Just the water. It's like a bucket right here. It just hits the brakes. If I can get him again. There he is. No, no. Can't connect with him. There he is. It's the little one. That's what I was guessing. Oh, this one took the, the blowtorch. Look at that. Come on now. Don't be shy. Came up with the dropper. Cute. All right, I haven't a day fishing like in a long time. It was just, you know, the fish are where you'd expect them to be. Oops. Cast to them and you get them. There's one. Appears to be much smaller fish in this run. It's okay. There's the young fish on the bird's nest. Sweet. I'll fish this spot a little more and then I'll try moving up. I don't know what I'm going to be able to fish on top of this run. There's not a lot of room. I spent a very significant amount of time trying to get through that wall of blackberries and willows and poison oak. And I just ended up getting shut down. I couldn't get through. So I'm heading back down. Back to the hole where I just got four or five fish. I still have a bird's nest on the point and I have a waltz worm on the dropper. Hmm, there's one. Way at the back of the pool. Bird's nest, what do you guess? What do you guess? Sorry, my camera's pointed down. I'm gonna do. It's. Can't really get drift all the way over there on the edge. I'm gonna throw an indie on to see if I can get a nice clean drift all the way over there on the edge. Oh, 
shit. Darn it. Apparently I didn't put my Indy on. Whoops. Okay, that one's on there. That's the drift I wanted. This is the run where I got my first one. Also the best fish of the day. Fat 16 inch football of a fish. And then I know there was one that ate that came right off, so. Try going a little deeper here. Put my cider down in the water. Can't move any fish out of here again. That's all right. We're almost back to where we hiked down and got to the river and there's a know there's a bunch of good water downstream of where I made contact. So lots of good fishing ahead of me. Okay. I've already fished through this before tight lining, but I'm gonna throw an Indy on and see if I can get anywhere with that. Give this run another chance, this time with an indicator. I know this water has held fish for me in the past. Oh, that was a good spot. really tough to get it all the way over there against the rock. So I just spent the last 15 minutes uh, tucked up against the cliff underneath a little tiny oak tree. Cause this, the sky just opened up, it just started dumping rain on me. So it uh, looks like the sun's coming back out. And all my plans to keep fishing are intact. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. There's some salmon or steelhead over there. They're huge. Holy crap. Those are some big ass freaking steelhead. You guys can see this on camera. It's a pod, a very large fish. Maybe steelhead, they could be salmon. I'm not sure. I mean, this is the middle of June. Usually salmon run in the fall, unless it's a spring run coming in kind of late. But they look like they're cruising around feeding. They're not acting like spawning fish. Like I said, there's a pod of at least 10 really large fish, like five to 10 pound fish. And they're just cruising around in circles. Didn't spook them, but they kind of shifted away from my indicator. So I saw one rise and I'm pretty sure it was a chrome steelhead. Oh, guess I need to be a little less hasty. Looks like there was one underneath my flies. Pretty sure it was a steelhead. So I think this is a pot of steelhead, not salmon. So I'm gonna go for it. It's a terrible cast. Part of my problem here though is if I do hook one, there's one right by it. If I do get one to eat this, it's gonna be quite a ride. I'm up on this big pillar and I'm gonna have to climb down to the water to net it. Ooh. I think that might have just been an eat. I had a fish follow my worm. Put a squirmy on. I'm just gonna let this soak. I wish I had brought some of those eggs I tied up last night. I was not expecting to see this today. All right, changing up the tactics a little bit. I don't think they're that deep. So I put on a pass rubble eggs and then a what do you call it? Shot back on the dropper, something small, imitative. Because these fish are getting really long looks at these, so I'm thinking more realistic. Is the ticket? We'll see. Oh, that fish right there is so chrome. Let's see it from here. And that chrome fish I'm looking at is an absolute monster. It's got to be a 30 inch fish, probably 10 pounds. It's ginormous. All right, I'm going to take the Indy off, put a streamer on, see if I can move him with that. Hmm. Beautiful uh, lesser goldfish just flew by, bright yellow. Don't have a whole lot of control, I'm just going to swing this thing. Let's see 
if I can give it, give the steelhead a look at it. Drifted right over the pod. <laughs> There's a huge blow up out there. Dang. Hmm. Oh, that was such a beautiful fish. He just slurped it off the surface. Fish went airborne. All right, this is a little bit of a Hail Mary. I couldn't get him on the dry fly, so I left the tapered leader on so I can send out a, an indicator nymph rig out a little bit further so I can get out to the best lane that those steelhead are in. See if I can get a better drift out to them. That drift's going right over them. Caddis green dredger, baby. Let's see what they want. Didn't see a single one of them move for it. That's fish on. <laughs> a little tiny one. Good, he came off. That's funny. I was stripping back and he had a fish that ate my red dart. Bunch of fish coming over to see what's going on here. Bunch of fish swirling around. Come on, eat it. Dang, they looked at that for a while. Mm, one of those chrome ones circled around it. Another chrome one circling, circling. Let's see if we can get one more good cast in there. I'm getting tired. I'm tired. The storm's about to break open again. Yeah, there we go, right over their heads. Drift, drag free. It's going good. A couple of them moving, that well, one moved away. Uh, they're wise to me, apparently. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you watching it. I know this was a longer one and making it all the way to the recap means a lot to me. So if you haven't yet, please like the video and subscribe if you're not yet. If you don't have any of these flies yet, check them out at driftstone.co slash shop. I've got those for sale in two sizes, I think size 12 and a size 14, so check it out. Now the end of the video was a total surprise. I was not expecting to find any stale head here. It's not the right time of the year, but alas, there they were. There was a pod of at least 10 of them in there and there were two chromies that were like, at least 30 inches, they were huge. They were really, really big steelhead. You know, the hole wasn't very ideal. I couldn't really fish from a very good position. It was cliffed out on all sides. So I had to stand up high on that perch, make try to make long casts out to them, but uh, I couldn't get into it. I tried streamers, I tried squirming worms, I tried realistic flies, I tried attractor flies, I tried them all. Oh, I even tried dry flies. So I threw everything at them. They were rising several times. I got them on film even. It was really hard to get nice clean drifts across them because it was so far away and I was so high. But 
Uh, alas, that's still really cool to see them in there. If you haven't heard yet, I started a podcast. It's called the Driftstone Fly Fishing Podcast. I've got two guests on there and I've got a cool line of people coming up. Don't want to miss it. So be sure to check it out in your favorite podcasting app and follow me there. And again, if you haven't liked this video, now's the time to do it. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not. Until then, everybody, see you on the water and Godspeed.